Yes, welcome back to another episode of the Celtic View podcast and this week we are going back to 2009 to look back on that League Cup final victory in the derby against Rangers. Of course, looking ahead to Sunday's showpiece event and we've got two of the guys alongside us who were instrumental in that victory. Steve McManus, captain on that day and Dan O'Day who obviously scored the first goal in, in that match as well. Uh, Guys, thanks very much for joining us. Bring back some good memories, Stephen. Uh, it certainly does. You know, it was a long time ago. You know, you'll need to refresh your memories. I think the only <laughs> thing I remember for the game was Dan scoring. Um, but no, listen, great occasions, and it's always nice to sit back and kind of reflect on on enjoyable results, enjoyable result, and, and enjoyable games that you played in. Yeah, Darren, special moment for you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's you look back now, and it's by far and away the biggest moment of my career um, but can as Stephen says you, you at the time don't probably appreciate it as much because at Celtic it's kind of the norm um, I remember vaguely the kind of aftermath of it was a kind of quick celebration and then we had a game in kind of four or five days time so um, it's now when you're finished and you can look back and certainly it's it's great to to look back and obviously it's a, as I said, it's the biggest moment of my career and, and something that I really enjoy looking back on now. Brilliant, yeah, we'll get into it in more detail in just a little bit, but first of all, have you both on, we can't have you here without talking about the B team, of course, both the coaches of the B team this season. Stephen, if you kind of look back on the season so far, there's not many games left yeah, for you in the Lowland League, we're just sitting here in the back of a 3-1 victory over Gretna, how would you sum up everything so far? Uh, it's probably been the quickest year that I've had in, in, in my coaching career and, and so far and, and when your weeks kind of go by as quickly as what they have done so far it's because of, you, nine times out of ten it's because of how much you're enjoying it. Um, both Darren and I spoke about it in the summer when the managers had, had, had kind of gave a slight incline that, that there might be a, a, a change and, and, and he spoke to us uh, when we came back to pre-season and, and like I said it couldn't have went any better so far for the two of us personally and then collectively. Uh, the group of players that we, that we work with every day are, are, are fantastic to work with, they're a real pleasure to work with, they've got a real, real good work ethic, a real humility, the kind of values that we kind of look for um, within the football club and again the both of us are only trying to guide them on their journey and hopefully we'll, we're doing that in the best way that we can we can possibly do it. Yeah, because you're dealing with players who are at that early stage of their career hoping to make the step that both of you made but most interested because for the two of you as coaches, this is the early days of your coaching career. So, Dan, have you learnt quite a lot in this year as well? Yeah, I have. I've learnt. It was why I wanted to work at the club in the first place. I think it's my fourth season back. Um, was I wanted to be surrounded by, I suppose, people better than you um, that will challenge you. And certainly at this club, there's there's no greater challenge um, in the country of, of trying to work here with with fantastic staff so this year yeah of course I have because we've kind of been tasked by the manager to do a specific job and there's a remit with the B team and um, I've learnt I've learnt an awful lot um, and also then working alongside someone like Stephen who's who's had vast experience of working obviously at Motherwell and, and um, with our first team last year it's it's fantastic and as a young coach that's all you can ask for is to be in the right environment and hopefully that's something similar to what the players would say. Once you're in the right environment and you work hard enough, usually you get to where you want to go. Yeah, and we were going to look back in your early days, your playing career and of course that final, but if you were to say, Stephen, when you first set eyes on Darren back in the day that you two were going to be B-team coaches, what would you have said? Again, listen, you, you want to work with good people. That's that's the first thing that, that, that you can look for. And, and I'm a big believer in like attracts like. Um, and like I said, when you become a coach, it, it becomes all about the players and you, there must be that respect um, between the staff and, and the people that you're working with and it stems from working with good people and, and like I said, Dan's been terrific to work with along with the, the staff that we've got. Um, it's been a real collective kind of effort this year um, and you hopefully people can start to see the rewards with the fruits of your labour, which is boys getting into the first team, getting into match day squads, which has happened for the last couple of weeks and, and long may continue. Yeah. Darren, when you were first coming through, obviously you both had the same type of journey. Uh, obviously you'd come over from Ireland and come into the youth teams, but you both made that progression. Stephen being a, a player that played in your position as well, if you think back in those early days, was he somebody that you, you looked up to in a sense of trying to follow his journey? Yeah, no, we speak about this all the time to to the players uh, 
someone I would have looked up to because I would have, he was obviously ahead of me. So I naturally looked at what he did and, and thought of maybe things I could do. Um, but ultimately it was dog eat dog. You were trying to, I was trying to get ahead of him. I was trying to train harder than him. Um, but the reality of it was because of the, the level Stephen was at and the level or how committed he was to his kind of profession, it made it very hard to outwork people. Um, but that was kind of the environment we grew up in where you, you nearly, it was the competitive edge, people you maybe socialised a little bit off the pitch with, ultimately they were your competitors. But in an academy, the key to it is the guys that you're competing against, if they're at a low level, it'll likely mean you will be as well. So we're trying to create with the B team that competitive edge that people are trying to chase each other down. And with the B team in particular, trying to understand that they're not now just chasing each other down, they're chasing in the first team players. It's players they consider that are, are maybe, kind of, you think of Callum McGregor, you think of him as someone that is nearly, a, he's a legend of the club and someone that you think is so far in the distance. Well, if you're a central midfielder in the B team, that's who you need to chase down. So the standards you're going to have to hold yourself to are going to be really, really high. So yeah, of course I looked at things Stephen did and, and copied them and that improved my game. I think the, the biggest thing Stephen did for me was how hard he worked made me have to work, well, try to work harder. Yeah, brilliant. Well, plenty of experience to pass on to the, the B team players this season and the seasons to come. Let's kind of look now back to 2009 in the League Cup final. Um, obviously, we're looking ahead to Sunday's big showpiece event. We're hoping to, to retain our League Cup uh, under Ange Postacoglu. I'm interested, the week before a game like that, What's it like, Stephen? I don't know if you have memories of, of that one in particular, but just the build-up to such a big occasion, a, a derby match as well. I think certainly for us, Ryan, is, 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 is kind of players that have come through the academy. You're brought up with big games, you're brought up in a pressurised environment. So for us, it was it was the norm. It was playing in uh, Champions League nights, games that had to, you had to win every single week. So cup finals were no different. Um, if I remember rightly, we went to Glen Eagles for two nights. Would that be right before it? Yeah. Um, Glen Eagles, yeah, maybe. And, and, and I was the rice pudding was good down there. <laughs> but I ended up in a bed that had wheels on it and wooden <laughs> floor, so every time I rolled over, my bed kept moving. So I was <laughs> and that's always stuck in my mind for yeah. whatever reason. But so these are the, the couple of days before the before game. Before it we went away, the manager took us away is just to kinda of get away for everything and so we're a wee bit together. We've done the usual dinners, quizzes, which was which was always really good. Um, there was good characters within the group. You had Barry Robson. I'm, 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 I'm sure was a, a part of that at that, at that kind of time. Um, Aidan McGee, Scott McDonald. You know, Dan was 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 lively back then as well for a young a young lad, which was brilliant. It was at Gary Caldwell. It was a real real good, good because the core of the team was predominantly Scottish and Irish and international players. So there's a Gordon was massive on a kind of togetherness within the, the, the group, and that came from a lot of respect because as Dan touched on, you've seen how hard people kind of worked with, you know, and, and, and Scott Brown was, 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 was pivotal in that as well because Bruni's character, even though he, was, he wasn't as mature as he obviously became, but he was still daft as a brush. So <laughs> the group was really, really good. It was a real positive vibe um, within the, 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 the squad and, and ultimately that was, the, you knew how to enjoy yourself, but you also knew when the time to work was, that was your, that was our bread and butter, was to work hard every day. So did you get any sleep then in that bed before? I, I, that was, I, I remember two really, really rotten night's sleeps because my, <laughs> the, my bed kept rolling. I should have probably complained, but I never ever made a fuss. So um, that was... I mean, you were a captain. Surely you could have got a bed no, at least. I, I, I know, that was terrible. In a place like Glen Eagles. Glen Eagles <laughs> is, is, is out of this world as a place. But I ended up with a bed with wheels on it and it kept moving. <laughs> so what was the thinking then for, for Gordon Dan, to take you away to Glen Eagles? What would you do differently in that type of week than a normal league match? Yeah, it sounds, it's not exactly probably what you want to hear, but going to cup finals, when I, I'm not going to name other clubs, but I hear about other clubs and they, they can remember literally every day leading up to the cup final. The only time you remember at Celtic going to a cup final is if you win them. So it's a different kind of mindset. And we probably prepared for a lot of games very intensely. So... I can't remember anything different in terms of training or, or anything like that, but that was probably Gordon's thinking of taking us out to actually change the environment slightly because it clearly was it was a big game. I have to admit, I can't remember. I can't remember. I remember going to Mar Hall as well. It was a cup final. I don't really remember any of the lead up. Um, 
the only thing I remember clearly, what I, I'm going to put my neck on the line here because I bet you I'm completely wrong. <laughs> But I'm sure we we drew or lost the we week lost. before St Mirren. Yeah. Oh, that is magic. Yeah. That is brilliant. I, I'm sweating. <laughs> Scottish I, Cup. Yeah, Scottish Cup. That's right. So I remember that. I remember the week before there was a little bit of tension because we we I just remembered the feeling of not winning, um, and again that was pretty unique that feeling, um, especially the squad we had. So I remember the, the kind of that lead up to it. We, we were on our toes. I, I certainly I remember I played the week before. But I definitely didn't go into the game thinking I was going to play. I was going to start. I don't know why that is. Um, but I definitely remember that because I always remembered when I knew I was going to play. So that's probably why I can't remember it so much. It's probably I thought I was probably going to be on the bench. I was prepared as I would always have done. But um, ultimately, I thought I'd probably play a bit part in it. Yeah. And taking you away from the kind of bubble in Glasgow, obviously every manager and squad does things differently. But for you guys in that team, was that a benefit? Because I can imagine the whole circus around the place at a big game like that must be must be and crazy. Again, as Dan said, on we just went to work. You know, we we would come in every day to training, and, and we would just work whatever way the manager wanted to, to, to do things. And, and he obviously felt along with staff that that was the best thing for us to go and prepare for 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 the game. So for us, it was it was normal, it was natural. Whatever whatever happened, we just went with the full night. Like you said as long as there was a training pitch for us to then to, to train on, we we, we did our work. Um, but I'm pretty sure that I think the manager changed it, didn't he? Went yeah. with Aiden and, Aiden Aiden Scott. and Scott McDonald up front. And we we done a lot of work in that, um, in the in, in that week leading up to the to the final, and it was amazing how, because again it was always Jan Venegar of Hesselink that then played along with somebody else. Um, so to go with kind of two smaller guys, that was Gordon's thinking at, at the time. With, with Aiden and Scott's movement been very good, they would cause Rangers a bit of problem. And in the day, both of them were, were terrific. And um, I remember it being a really cagey affair. Um, and again, both teams were, there, were, there, were, there was never much between both sides at that point. So again, we were full of Scotland internationalists and other internationalists. Rangers were the exact same. It was two really, really good teams with a lot of top, top international players within both groups. And Stephen, as captain for that final. In the lead up to a match like that, and maybe in the day of it, do you have to take on a different role to speak to people? What were you like as a captain in those no, moments? I, again, you, you were, I was probably different as, as a young player. I was, uh, again, both of us were very aggressive the way we played. Um, as you get older, you, you, you tend to kind of mature a wee bit and kind of calm yourself down a wee bit. So um, I, I never ever looked at myself as being any more important than anybody else. I was, I was a, I was a, a an individual within a team, a, a team unit that, that worked as hard as they possibly could. Hopefully, your your leadership then came through how you performed and how you worked. But there was loads of guys that, that were the exact same. You know, it was um, again. I was just lucky to be a part of, of, of a really successful Celtic side in the in the in the, in the years that I played. Um, and you, what as Dan said, you work as hard as you possibly can because you're working. You see other people how hard they work, and you feel as if that's the level you need to then be at so that you can maintain in the side. Mm -hmm. Dan, you said you weren't sure if you were going to play, so when did you find out you were starting? Was Gordon the type of manager that would no. flip it over? Or? No. Uh, yeah, Gordon would just fling it on top of you. <laughs> um, and it, Actually, I, I never really thought of it this way, just till Stephen's talking about there. Scott and Aidan maybe playing through the middle, probably had a, 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 a maybe a, a thing in his head of then they were smaller guys, having more height in the team, myself there. Glenn Leuven's played with Mick and it was Gary Caldwell in the middle of the pitch with Bruni. So obviously, as much as we were small at the top end, maybe that's how I got picked. Um, no, Gordon, I had no idea Gordon named the team. Um, and the thing I always liked about Gordon was he would fling you in the, in the absolute deep end. But because he didn't speak, he always kind of thought he feels all right with this. Then it, it nearly made you feel good. But I, I've told this before, the only thing he said to me before the game was, and Mick, you'll know it better than me, but I'm sure Hamden, the dress, there's the dress room, and then when you walk to the toilets, you go through the coach's room. So I was just going through the toilet, and I tried to go out and loan in the January to Burnley. A deal fell through, and I was pretty disappointed just to play, play more games, and Gordon just said, this is better than Burnley, isn't it? And that was typical Gordon, like that was my pep talk <laughs> for the cup final and he wasn't half wrong, it was better than Burnley. I was going to say in the lead up to a match, Gordon seemed like the kind of the king of the one-liners and maybe that being one of them, but in the, the, the heat of that moment, you're about to go out, into the, the, out onto the pitch, what was he like? Would he be the type of manager trying to 
G people off or take us into that dressing room? No, I, I think it's, it's funny when people are, even you get into Celtic Rangers games, Ryan, I think everybody feels that the emotion kind of takes over um, because that's what the fans, everybody's, everybody's super excited, they're charged up, they're revved up, but as, as players and as, as coaches, you probably go the other way um, because you then need to then take the emotion out of it and you need to then almost kind of calm everybody down. Um, and that's even when you look at our first team just now, there's, I know Dan's mentioned them already, but there's, there's, there's not a better player, there's not a better person in our football club just now than, than Callum. Um, because he brings that, he's got that presence, he's, he, he brings a calmness to everybody else. And, and that's the kind of, these, these are the characters that you need when you're going to then play in these kind of big games because if, if the emotion becomes too much, and again, that's why Dan was able to come in seamlessly to, to, to a big game like that because you work so hard during the week for that moment. If you then become too emotional and you don't then perform, you feel as if you've let everybody kind of down and that was the same. So for us, Gordon was, was, was always relatively calm. He was always keeping us kind of more a calming influence. Don't get me wrong, at half time he could, and after the game he could, he could uh, blow his top the same as, as what you could imagine. But for everybody else, it was, it's about thinking clearly and, and, and being really, really focused on your job before going into, going into a big game. I'm laughing, thinking, trying to G me up before we <laughs> just get or Mick up or Bruni up. That's the last thing you needed. Yeah. Uh, so the dressing room didn't. Few red cards. Much, yeah, first the dressing room minutes. didn't need much of a yeah. much of a push. So but yeah, as Mick said, it was more about calming you down. Yeah. Before we get into some of the individual moments from the match, but actually, I was interviewing Glenn Lewins last week, the week before, for a, for a podcast, and How asked him for some brilliant. Yeah, really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was brilliant with us, and um, I was asking him for some Gordon Strachan stories, and he said he told me one about. There was a time where I think we must have drawn the game or lost the game or something. He was eating a plum oh. and he flung it and you had to duck. Was it was it bad for things like no, that? He, he always so when Gordon was at his angriest, this is true as day, and anyone will tell you, he would pit yeah. He would no. he would be eaten. No. So you come in the dress room and be quiet, you know something's coming, and he would always start eating fruit. And you're like, Jesus, something's gonna happen. <laughs> something's gonna So I I don't remember that incident, but yeah. It makes complete sense because any time he was angry, there was a piece of fruit he was eating <laughs> just before it. You'd have to get your head down. You'd, it was like a tick it. or something he had. He always seemed to eat fruit just before he was about to blow his lid. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, let's get into some of the, the moments of the game then. Um, obviously, it's a nil-nil for the full 90 minutes and it goes to extra time. But it was a really kind of nervy game, quite cagey as well. I was looking back in the highlights of it this morning, actually. Stephen, I don't know if you remember, there was a... I had to my heart in my mouth just watching this highlight. You played it back to Arthur and he'd done a Cruyff turn. Do you remember that at all? No. No? no but I, don't well, I mean, it's not that you didn't play a bad pass or anything, but Arthur just kind of like dilly-dallied in the ball and played a Cruyff turn and I oh, had my heart in my moment. And uh, Dan Hughes, you had a header as well in the, during, extra, uh, during normal time before you obviously you, you scored the extra time header as well. I don't know if you remember, remember that at all. No, I remember the Arthur. Do you? Yeah, you know, yeah, I remember Arthur. Yeah, tried to cry for and it. Yeah, he did that a few times. Yeah, though, yeah. He? Arthur could unpredictable. That's probably <laughs> the best way of putting it. And the game goes into extra time then, and I remember being at the game, and obviously Dan, you score within a minute or two. But my first thought was like, could we not have just done that a few minutes before? We didn't have to have this extra time. Um, but Dan, talk us through that moment of of scoring at hand and and a. And a moment like that as well. Maybe just take us to the moment prior to that when Nakamura standing over the free kick and what you're kind of thinking at that moment. Yeah, it's easy to start telling telling stories now of what you think and the the fact of the matter is I was exhausted. I was exhausted because I'd not played as much football as the guys. Obviously playing at left back is a different position. I obviously I'd played there many a time, so physically though as a cost on your body, I'd spent from 70 minutes onwards, cramping up. So, um, truthfully, I was just trying to survive. And when you get a free kick, it's deadly. I'm deadly serious. I, the reason I was most pleased was I thought, I'm not gonna have to defend for a few minutes. <laughs> so you go up the pitch nearly for a breather and next minute, like people, I think I've listened to the commentary enough of, of kind of you talk about a run forward. I barely moved in the box. and. Naka bin Naka, his deliveries were that good. As long as you filled certain areas, you were usually going to land on it. Um, and it was more instinct then. But at the time, I wasn't going up with the mindset of I'm going to score the winner here. It was, I need to just survive. Um, 
But yeah, it was a it was un un unbelievable moment. I remember the celebrations. It was it was brilliant. And then your your the reality hits and go back to the very start of it is you only get remembered off these goals is if you win the game. So you quickly fo refocus, and then it's about trying to trying to see it out. I suppose. Yeah, because like twenty nine long minutes then after that of extra time to to see the match out, but. Just kind of sticking with that that moment for, for you, Darren. Is that a moment that kind of ranks as one of your uh, proudest yeah. moments? Yeah, obviously, yeah. To score in any cup final, but then to score at a club like Celtic, the affiliation I have at the club. I was there since I was 15 years old. Um, and yeah, to score obviously against Rangers, it was it's as good as it gets, really. Um, so no, it was fantastic. But I said at the time, you. you I did appreciate it, but not to the extent like now, when I think of the level of player I was at this club, which was brilliant to be a part of it in any shape or form. But now you go around, people still talk about it, and people daily probably bring it up. So that's what Gordon used to say it all the time, is you're making moments of history at this club constantly. And that was bigger than any financial reward you'd get was those moments of history. And that, that certainly now to me means more than, than anything else I did in my career. Superb. We then score an added time of extra time. Eddie McGiddy scores a penalty. But for yourself then, Stephen, we get the second goal. We know we're going to win the match. As captain, just try and describe what that feeling's like when the full-time whistle goes and you know you're going to be walking up those stairs at Hamden. It's, it's probably a relief more than anything. You know, it's again, you, you don't look at it as being a, a moment for you individually. It's a, it's a real collective. It's about the team. It's about supporters. It's about your family that's then in the, in, in the stand, that's kind of what, it's, what makes it all worthwhile because these are the people that have made sacrifices for you to then have the career that you've had. You know, again, my, my, my dad, my, my papa at the time, they went to every, every game, so they, they get to see you then playing at Hamden in cup finals for the team that you've supported as, as a young boy, so it's, it's an unbelievably proud moment for them and that's when it becomes special and then again you're able to then do it as part of a team that there's not a greater feeling in the, in, in the world when you feel valued within a team structure um, and that's what we had, that was the, that group of players certainly had a real humility about themselves because everything was based for the team and not about individuals, if you were focused as an individual on yourself, you wouldn't have survived in, 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 in the teams that we played in because of the mentality that Gordon had. Gordon was massive, there's, there's a lot of similarities between that team and, and the team that, that, that the manager has just now with regards to Gordon demanded that we were super fit, so even that was the big thing that we sp spoke about all the time, you were super fit because of the how we how we trained every single day. Um, and then again, when you probably when you watch it back, that's when Aiden probably came into his own. I remember that day, Aiden was terrific. He was probably, I think he won man of the match that day. He was absolutely terrific. And Aiden was an unbelievable footballer and a real, real good worker. Um, and a lot of times you see young, you see players with that ability, and they've maybe not got the, the, the work ethic that they, the, 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 they probably should have. Aiden was the exact opposite because Aiden trained hard. He, he just went to his maximum every single day. And, and, and that was a that was a big big thing for us about how fit we were as, as a team. Yeah, it's interesting because Dan, you were talking about potentially going out and loan to to Burnley. I was reading some reports around that game at the time, and I think Aiden hadn't been in the squad for a couple of weeks as well. So it just shows. I mean, from a kind of coach's point of view, maybe something you really on to players now that you just never know what's going to happen in football and when you're going to get that opportunity. Yeah, we preach that every day. Um, there's just so many different occasions. We've all got, we've all got our own kind of story of whenever your opportunity do, did or did come, whether that's making your debut. There's always a backstory to it of, of maybe such and such got injured, then there was an illness, and all of a sudden you were in. But the fact of the matter is, everyone thinks it's that little bit of luck that gets you in, that gets you that opportunity. It's not. It's a backlog of years and years of dedication and work. Um, so it's just then, whenever that opportunity comes, whenever it comes, you're just going to be ready. And I think that's that's what the most successful ones, um, at, certainly at this club, have, is just a, a mindset and a work ethic. And it's nearly... It's been ignorant to when your opportunity is going to come, just been ready for any moment. And yeah, you use that example. I didn't know I was going to start. I, I look back on it now. I, the reason I know it wasn't going to start was like, none of my family were there. My wife now was there. It was my girlfriend at the time. But I wasn't preparing, thinking I was going to play. But 
the fact of the matter was I prepared the same way regardless. Um, Aiden would have been the exact same. All of us were the exact same. So, um, yeah, it does show you that big moments in your life can happen at any moment. The only thing you can do is, is work every day. And when that ever that comes, you'll be ready. Mm -hmm. So, is there any celebrations after a, a match like that? <laughs> what, was it? what was the dressing room like? Oh, listen, the dressing rooms are, when you win, like you say, that's it's the best feeling in the world. You know, there's, there's no feeling like it. And, um, and, and, but as Dan said, I'm sure there was a game not long after it. So you then, the, at a club like ours, your next focus is, is you enjoy that moment because you don't know when it's going to then come around again. So it's really important that you enjoy the moment, take it in. But then you go back to work, whether it's the next day or the day after, because you've got another game coming up, and and it's it's almost it's that's what being relentless is. That's what being part of this football club is. If you want to be successful as part of this football club, you have to be relentless. You have to be relentless in how you live, lead your life away from the football club. As Dan says, we speak about it all the time about preparing for your moment. Who knows when that moment's going to come? But you must prepare for it. And again, there was there was games that were coming thick and fast after that. So. Everything was just about the next game. Right, it was good, it was a good environment. Because I, remember, I have to say, I'm giving it the big one here and telling everyone else how they should leave their life. We went out, and I tried to go out the next day, and it was <laughs> the older ones saying, "Mind your neck, give me the game in a few days time." <laughs> so I was trying to tear, tear the backside off it. To be honest with you, um, did you get a clap in the ear from someone? Yeah, yeah, no, because we went out obviously that night had your kind of celebration and. First thing in the morning, I was straight back up, right, when we meet again, everyone's like, <laughs> settled out, we might get back to bed. We've got game in a few days, so. Uh, it's all experience you can use now to, yeah, yeah, I can to, tell tell the, now. to tell the young players. Um, brilliant memories to look back on. I suppose kind of the final question then is about looking ahead to, to this game on Sunday. I think it's one that everybody is looking forward to as, as any cup final and... I mean, you you get to work closely with with Ange, and, and you get to see the players and in training on a regular basis as well. And just what they're building at this moment in time is is so special. So there's a lot of excitement around this one. Yeah, listen, there is, and, and again, the managers he preached about this last year when he first came in. It was about about what you do at training every single day. Um, that's why there's there's so much belief um, within the football club. Um, it's because you, the, that's the evidence of of how the boys train every single day. That's why you get the results that, that we've had. That's why you get the positive performances and in, in big games that we've had. So at the weekend, it's going to be another really difficult occasion, a really difficult game. But we've we've certainly um, you go into it as a club. I'd imagine full of confidence. The players will be right at it again, having seen how the manager and the coaching staff work and the players work every single day. They'll we'll go there full of confidence. Yeah. Taking our two 0 Darren. Four hundred percent. Brilliant, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, brilliant to kind of look back and. And that game back in 2009 and hopefully it brought back a few memories for yourselves as well. So thanks very much for joining us on Celtic View Podcast and hopefully we've got a victory on Sunday to look forward to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.